I'll let you go to my next one. Y'all ready to go? I have toil all night. Go back to Luke 5. Uh, what is that, verse 4? Yeah. Y'all get anything, though? I'm just trying to help you out. I, 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 I'm trying to be funny down there, but I guess uh, this don't work out. I can always try to do some stand up. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, verse, give me uh, verse five. And Simon answered and said, to him, "Master, we've toiled all the night and have taken nothing. Nevertheless, at thy word, I will let down the net." He told him nets. He decided I'm gonna take a shortcut because you know I, I just don't believe it right now. I'm gonna let down the net. Because, you know, I've been toiling, and my toiling has caused me to downsize on what I need to do. Because he told him nets. He said, well, I'm just going to do one net. Because that's what happens when you toil long enough. Yeah. You won't go complete obedience. You just get enough obedience. You know what I'm saying? You know God said give 100, but you get 50. Anybody ever been there? You know God said tithes, you tip. You know, your tithes are thirty nine dollars, but you give thirty seven fifty. Wow. Yeah, yeah, this folks are doing all the time. They say, "What am I blessed? What, what's going on? I, I got a bag with holes. You got a head with holes. Because there's a hole here. You have to do it according to what God has predetermined. We'll talk about that next week. Never let that not work. So make sure you come. Well, we go that right there. You, that's going to be it. That right there going to be it. Never let that down. Because I got to get the people say, to get to that point and say, you know what? I, yeah, I'm, I'm toiling. Yeah, I'm having a hard time. Yeah, things are not going right. Yeah, my ends are not meeting. My kids are acting crazy. My uncles are acting crazy. My aunts are acting crazy. Everything around me is acting crazy. And so I'm going to show you. I'm gonna come, I got about 10 minutes. I'm going to show you how we've toiled all night. Humanity has toiled all night. When the now, when, since we've been saved, we had the greatest opportunity of light that we ever had before. I know I did not Google, but Google on many forms and many platforms have become a blessing. There's things that back in the day we had to wait on the encyclopedia to come. Anybody remember that? We used to order encyclopedia, and you had to have those big old things. They sent you one every month, I think it was, and until you got all the way up to Z. Anybody remember that? You had to go through it, and then you couldn't get it in the encyclopedia, you had to go to the library. You didn't have the little phones you got right now. You didn't have them some years ago. And we didn't have access to that type of information. But now we got the church to still archaic in some manners and behaviors that we should be greater in scope and light. Things should be changing on us because the Bible says that knowledge has increased. And I'm not talking about end time. Knowledge has increased. We have the greatest uh, propensity towards knowledge than any other generation. They just celebrated the internet. What was it? I don't know, 25 years, something like that. 25th year anniversary, I think it was, for the internet. So we, in the last two decades and a half, we've had the greatest opportunity. And you can go in some places, we still don't have the information and the understanding of what God is requiring from us. And we have access to certain things that we've never had before. And we're still toiling, we're still spinning, we're still struggling. We can't get the upper hand when God wants us to get the upper hand. And some of it is through negligence. I understand that. Some of us are made a bad friends with some of our enemies. And, and, and see, if you struggle long enough, you will it'll take the fight out of you. If you struggle long, struggle long enough, you'll go back to what's common. You'll go back to the way things used to be. He toiled, it said he toiled all night. But the Bible says that we've been made endure for a night. But joy coming in the morning. Morning is not a chronological time. Morning doesn't have anything to do about the sun being set at a certain angle. The morning that God has for us is when revelation and understanding comes to a people. We're not the children of the night. We're the children of the day. Which means we're children of understanding. We understand what our father's doing. I'm prophesying. I know 
Bible tells us no. But don't prophesy that. We do. We understand what our Father has, his expectations and his desires and his goals and his plans concerning me and concerning us and corporately and individually. Amen? I wrote in my notes, we've been doing some things for a long time and have not been getting any results. Many leaders today have come to a place of reality that their methods are not working. Some of the things they used to do is not working because God is bringing mankind to the end of the flesh. Look, these recordings that are popping up and Black Lives Matter, all lives matter, police lives matter, everybody's lives matter, all that stuff that's going on, everything's coming to a head. We're in harvest. There's a sickle in the earth to reap the corruption that's in the earth. So as catastrophic and tragic as things has been, it's all working according to his counsel. So things we couldn't see publicly is now public. And most of our confidence and our assurance and our safety and our all the things we've confided in, we trusted this and trusted that, we can't do it no more. Remember back in the day, GF and Rumor Roy, some of y'all know nothing about all them old places. They were like Kanye and Night Court today. You get those jobs, you were destined to retire. There is no destined to retire no more. Jobs are unsettled. Used to have careers, now they're jobs. Because we've been toiling, because we thought legislation is the answer. Got a black man for eight years and thought that was it. Hey! What is it? <laughs> Y'all don't learn about that. That's that victory dance. It's not about that. Because nobody can gauge the human heart. You can do what you want on the surface. It's not about a white man, black man, yellow man, red man. It's about a one new man. Oh boy, that didn't go well. Like the somewhere up here. <laughs> somewhere up here. But we've been toiling. I've been telling you. We've been doing some things for a long time. We've been, we've elevated black consciousness. I believe in it. Trust me. God is not offended with Jacob or Israel. People say, well, we need to think about just you know, us as a body. And me, I got, I got a white friend. He, he just gets real tight when I start talking about social issues and stuff. I said, look, look, man, I love you, brother. But there, those are issues. God is not afraid of Jacob or Israel. That's a blessing for who I used to be as a black man and the man that's been a Christian. The kingdom man. This, this man over here, Jacob, I will never let Jacob rule over Israel. Over. I need to say this. Some of us think we give more credence to our blackness. It ain't even a word. No, no, no. In the kingdom, first natural, then spiritual. And then the lesser will be served by the greater. So the greater will be served by the lesser. Which means the greater is who you become in in Christ. So who you are in Christ should be greater than who you were in Adam. However, that don't mean you have to get rid of Adam and lose who you are to enjoy Christ. But you got to make sure you can sort through the two. Mm -hmm. And that stuff first hit the internet, I had to pull it back. God said, stop. I will pose it. Holy Spirit said, stop that. I pull it back and let them speak. Some of us never got to that place, trust me. But I can stand on your page. Holy Spirit will speak to you. Okay? You're Carl. You get, you're taking it personal. It's rubbing you the wrong way. We don't hear stuff like that. I'm going to say what I want to. I don't care if the pastor sees it or not. He'll get over it. Well, we do. Folks, what I did, though? I don't care. You know, you got a wife telling you, you think you really need to be putting that out there like that? I am a mall man. He get up with his pants on just like I do. That's the common denominator. He put his pants on just like I do. I don't put my pants on like you do, but like on the other side of the bed. <laughs> but toil all night. I just been messing this morning. Toil all night. So we've been toiling 
all night. Most of us, because we do not yield to the principles of God. That's why he made he had to make that inference. He said, nevertheless, that's thy word. Mm -hmm. You gotta be able to submit. Let me just say this in closing. You gotta understand this exchange. This is not just an atypical exchange. Peter was a proven fisherman. All through the Bible, right? He had his own business. He had ships, which means he's pretty wealthy, right? Then you have this guy that's come up on you because you got to understand, they knew he was a rabbi, so he was dressed as a rabbi, so he wasn't dressed as a carpenter. See, at that time, their dress were told their story. So if they were the king, they dressed a certain way. If they were a beggar, they dressed a certain way. If they were blind, they were a certain way. They were left. See, you get what I'm saying? So when he walked up on him and told him what he needed to do, he could have did like some of us. <laughs> you know, because he got this guy that probably had no reference with his. But because we've been doing this all our lifetime, how dare you tell me what I needed to do? Peter submitted to that rabbi. He didn't have to have all the instructions. He just said, you know what? Nevertheless, as I work, we kick and scream when somebody's trying to give us instruction because they've never been where we've been. You don't know what I've been through. Anybody ever been Because people tell us if they ain't been through what you've been through, they can't tell you anything. That's a lie. They don't have to go through what you went through to be able to tell you something. Maybe they had an opportunity to do what you went through, but didn't. You ever thought over that level? So maybe uh, just because they didn't uh, uh, smoke the pipe don't mean they can tell you. They, they don't have a right to tell you don't smoke it. A two-year-old will tell you don't smoke the pipe. Mama, don't you think you need to stop that? A three-year-old will tell you that? You don't need to go through it to get wisdom. So experience don't necessarily warrant wisdom. They, so I'm saying this because Peter could have said everything. He said, you know what, my education got me this way. You know, you've never been to uh, seminary school, so how are you going to tell me what I need to do? You know, you don't have any kids, so how are you going to tell me to raise my kids? <laughs> all right, all right. You never had a big house like this. How are you going to tell me to handle my money? Mm -hmm. wow. All these disqualifiers. He, he could have got disqualified if he would have took the wisdom of God and counted as nothing and cast it out. But see, by us, we like to measure everything. It's got to be brand name. Come on now. It's got to be, you know, people won't listen to me because we're, we don't have a big edifice. We don't have a big church. You know, I don't have this bigness about myself.